So joining me now is Chris Berlay. He's got something called mineralfunds.com that's been tracking the performance and, and allocation, if you will, of gold funds since 1995. Chris, I'm really fascinated by the content that you've got. Just quickly describe what you track. So we track the managed gold funds of the world. There's a uh, 99, sometimes 102. It, it, you know, Some of them in, in recent years have closed. Some of them are... are new and opening seems to be about a seven year cycle, but these are managed gold funds that have an investment manager making active decisions on buying and selling gold companies. Um, and uh, so we track gold funds in every jurisdiction that there, that there are gold funds. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. And we're at so now I'm looking at your most recent report and I'm starting off with something like uh, acid under management, AUM. And I'm seeing names like Fidelity and Franklin and First Eagle increasing uh, their assets uh, under management and somebody like BlackRock going down uh, in the most recent report. What's going on? What are, what are you tracking here? Okay, so the, the reason, there are six of the 100 funds that we track that report monthly. Uh, and so we, public, we, we keep track of what's going on with their asset allocations on a monthly basis, and they're only one month out of date. Um, then there are further 20 funds that report quarterly, these are 13F requirements. In those instances, the monthly reporters are all voluntary. That's Fidelity, two Van Eck funds, two Franklin funds, and Allspring. Uh, just about $4 billion. The other funds uh, report uh, semi-annually as governed by the laws of mutual funds. So what you're seeing is assets under management decreased for BlackRock because the reporting period, and that's the most recent reporting period available on the full asset allocation for that fund, you're looking at is between August and February, August of 2023 and February of 2024. The other ones, you're looking at uh, the, the period between March and April of 2024. So a very different gold uh, price cycle. And obviously, uh, increasing gold price, increased assets under management for the funds that report monthly in the, in the March-April timeframe, and a decrease in gold price, somewhat more volatile in the, in the period from August 23 to uh, February 2024, uh, is what's reflected in the uh, decrease in AUM for the BlackRock fund. Okay, so when I look at some of these funds, their uh, largest holdings are familiar names to Canadians for sure. Uh, you look at Agnico Eagle and you look at Barrick. Uh, Wheaton um, uh, <clears throat> Precious Metals, as well as probably Newmont, wouldn't qualify as Canadian, but a good portion of the funds you're looking at are Canadian, correct? The companies that we're looking at are Canadian, yes. 55% of the money is invested in Canada. It's raised in different jurisdictions. The biggest jurisdiction for, for money is the United States, the biggest mutual fund market in the world, biggest capital markets in the world. So, um, <clears throat> but, the, but the money is invested in Canada. If the money's raised in Germany, 55% on average of this money is invested in Canada, a further 15% in Australia. So Canada is the market. And, and between Canada and Australia, you're 70% of the world market for gold companies. Outside of that, you have U.S. listings, 8%, England, 5%, South Africa, 5%. Uh, you've got uh, a very small percentage in Russia, China, uh, Mexico, uh, Ireland. And then about 8% of the, the, the money in these funds is held in cash. So what you're talking about there is the, um, the companies that are the investee companies of the funds are 55% of that money is invested in Canada. Okay, but here's the interesting part and where you really add value is you track new company holdings, don't you? And do you highlight that in the report? Absolutely. That's that's <clears throat> and that market intelligence, see, there's a longer than average hold period. <clears throat> and these these fund managers are are have been through several cycles in the gold business. And their their summary assessment of value is reflected in what they do with their portfolio. They purchase or, or uh, divest from an, you know, a, a company name. So when we look at six funds on a monthly basis, those are the, the most current intelligence that we see, for instance, for Van Eck. Van Eck is a great leader in this regard, I have to say, as is Franklin, as is Fidelity. They all publish on a monthly basis and now all spring. But we can see new names that they're adopting and they're high quality, good investment names that, they've, that have passed their due diligence. These investment companies are run by, uh, you know, CFA charter holders, geologists, and the, this, the sum, summary of their investment uh, 
uh, analysis is expressed in what they invest in. So the new names is of most interest. And they pick up, in this instance, we we saw a couple of new names. We've seen a great track record. G2 Gold was identified early by um, by Vanek. Allied Gold, another one, identified early, six months ago by Vanek. Now be, both being picked up by uh, the world's biggest gold fund. We see Snowline Gold. And in this, in this one, we see Meridian Mining, uh, a new name for us that was picked up by Franklin. Uh, great outcome with a with a with a project in in Brazil. So when we look at what they're doing on a uh, on a monthly basis, the data is only one month old. When we compare it to the previous portfolio and, and identify a new name, it gives us uh, great intel on on what are the um, most exciting exploration and development plays in the gold market today. Do you track the performance of those new entries? In other words, X Y Z mining comes pops up on your screen. You say, "Hey, that's a new entry. Let's see how it does over the next six months." Sure, and we we track them. Uh, this is uh, we 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 identify them, and we actually look for better entry points if it's possible. Because often there's a flurry of excitement around a financing, so we will we'll see a new company name with warrants come into a portfolio. We know that they've taken a private placement. In some instances, the stock might trade off. So we're we're cognizant of the entry level, which we can see from the portfolio. Uh, it's on our watch list, and um, and uh, that gives us the intel that it's a high quality name. And the hold periods are longer for these uh, for these types of investments. Often these managers um, identify with the actual company managers themselves, the chairman uh, in various instances, like uh, Peter Moroni, for instance, in the case of Allied Gold, Bruce McLeod, uh, in the case of uh, Meridian Mining, uh, uh, the new name for Franklin this month. And so, um, so we are tracking the, the the entry price of the funds, and we're looking for opportunities around that, basically. Okay, you're tracking active managers, guys that are buying and selling all the time, as opposed to exchange traded funds that are driven off some kind of an index. Uh, those ETFs are significantly larger, is my understanding, than active funds. Does that dilute or enhance your findings? ETFs... Um in aggregate are larger by assets, yes. There's over $300 billion in metal and mining ETFs, and we have $30 billion in managed gold funds. But uh, 180 of that is um, is gold ETFs, just gold bullion. So they're not, there are company ETFs, but it's not the outsize, the 10X. There's a lot of uh, ETFs uh, that, that hold metals, nickel, copper, uh, and um, uranium. So, uh, and gold, gold being the biggest, there's 74 gold ETFs around the world with um, almost 60% of that $300 billion uh, is, is gold ETFs. So uh, there are ETFs of mining companies and uh, both GDX, GDXJ, junior mining companies also, and, and the same in silver and, and uh, base metals. Um, so the, the, the intelligence that we get is around active managers, yes. Uh, there are opportunities around ETFs, uh, each of them has a little bit of a different formula on what constitutes uh, uh, the criteria for picking up a name into an ETF, and there might be some arbitrage around that. It's not something that we focus on. We're focusing on the decisions of active portfolio managers um, and, and the summary of their intelligence as expressed in what they actually do with the money they're managing. Okay, uh, so people can get any of this information at MuralFunds.com. Do you focus only on gold or do you do other minerals as well there? Uh, we have, uh, there's a much smaller group of battery metal funds and there are a small group of silver funds. There are six managed silver funds in the world. And uh, of, of, of real interest is uh, the expiration mandate funds in the, in the, around the world uh, that are relatively new. We have commodity discovery fund. In the Netherlands, we have uh, Crescat Precious Metals Fund in the U.S., a very good one, uh, Earth Exploration Fund out of Germany, and the Mine Discovery Fund out of Australia. Those are, uh, for, for, for those interested in the exploration part of the cycle, the new names, those funds in particular uh, are value-add. For instance, Dr. Quentin, Hen Quentin Henning, who is with uh, the Crescat Precious Metals Fund, um, is identifying some great geological plays in various jurisdictions. They're in early in some of the great discoveries. Um, so that's, that's the, and, and then asset allocations of the managed funds that are, that are disclosed on a monthly basis. That's where we get the market intelligence. Chris, a, a fascinating tool. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Pat.